now let us move to our next theorem this theorem says let f be the field of coefficients quotients in our, our earlier career class we have seen the definition of field of quotients of a unique factorization domain r if f1 and f2 they are two primitive members of rx primitive members means their coefficients are um, having greatest common divisor and are associates in fx then they are also associates in rx so you need to show that if f1 and f2 both are associates in f fx then they are also associates in rx iska proof dekha jaye since f1 and f2 both are associates in fx associates hain to one is the multi, uh, multiple of another therefore we can write f1x is equal to k into f2x where k is in f and k is non zero the only units of fx are the non zero elements of f now here f is your field of coefficients field of quotients of r therefore zero not equal to k in f implies that k is equal to g by h where g and h both are non zero g and h both belongs to r but this h is non zero so f1x can be written as g by h into f2x or it implies that h into f1x is equal to g into f2x since here h and g both are in r and f1 f2 they are primitive members of rx therefore f1 f2 both are associates in rx so this theorem is also proved there is one more theorem uh, for today this is a larger one if r is a unique factorization domain and if px is a primitive polynomial in rx then it can be factored in a unique way as the product of irreducible elements in rx irreducible means you cannot reduce it further and so that the polynomial ring rx over a unique factorization domain r is itself a unique factorization domain so its proof let f be the field of quotients of a unique factorization domain r and px be a primitive member of rx it is given in our problem we can regard p as a member of fx since p f is a field therefore this f is a unique factorization domain we know that ring of polynomials over a field is a unique factorization domain therefore px in fx can be factored as px is equal to p1x p2x1 pkx uh, there is multiple sign uh, multiply sign between in it they are between them where p1x p2x1 pkx they are irreducible polynomials in fx so we cannot reduce p1x further and so on pkx further now is pix is can be written as pi is equal to fi by ai for i greater than or equal to or less than or equal to k means p1 p2 p3 so on pk for all pi where ai belongs to r and fi x belongs to rx further we can write fi as ci into qi x where ci belongs to r and qi x is a primitive member of rx thus here pi can be written as ci qi by ai means ci by qi ci by ai into qi x where ci ai both belongs to r and qi is a primitive member of rx since your pi x is irreducible in fx therefore qi x also is also irreducible in fx why because this pi x is equal to ci by ai into qi x and pi is irreducible so this qi x will also be irreducible now this qi x is a primitive member of rx and this is irreducible in fx therefore qix is irreducible in rx we have seen it in our earlier theorem now px is equal to p1x p2x1 pkx so write the substitute the values of p1 p2x1 pkx so it will be c1 by a1 q1x c2 by a2 q2x and so on ck by ak qx and this is equal to c1 c2 c3 so on ck and a1 a2 so on ak into q1x q2x1 qkx or it implies that a1 a2 so on ak is into pkx is equal to c1 c2 so on ck into q1 q, q1x q2x1 qkx since q1x to q2 to qkx they are all primitive members of rx therefore q1x into q2x into so on into qkx is also a primitive member of rx since they are individually primitive members therefore their multiplication will also be a primitive member of rx 
further further px is primitive it is given in our theorem statement therefore from the relation one we conclude that px and qnx into q2x into so on qpx they are associates in rx therefore we can write px is equal to u into qnx q2x so on qpx where u is some unit in rx and hence it is in r if q1 is irreducible in rx then u into q1x is also irreducible in rx if we simply replace u into q1 by q1 then px can be written as q1x into q2x into so on qkx therefore this px is factored in rx because all of them are belonging to rx therefore this px is factored in rx thus we have factored px in rx as a product of irreducible elements now to show that the above factorization of px is unique up to the order and associates of irreducible elements let px is equal to r1x into r2x into so on rmx where the rix they are irreducible in rx since this p is primitive therefore each rix must be primitive consequently each rix must be irreducible in fx but this f is a unique factorization domain we have earlier seen therefore px belongs to fx can be uniquely expressed as the product of irreducible elements of fx why because this f is a unique factorization domain hence the rix and the qix they are elements of fx they are equal in some order since ri and qi they are primitive members of rx and are associates in fx therefore they are also associates in rx it is from our earlier theorem that if they are so uh, if two f1 f and q are associated in fx then they will, they will be associated in r the px has a unique factorization as a product of irreducible elements of rx now we are to prove if r is a unique factorization domain then so is rx let f be belonging to rx be an arbitrary then we can write f in a unique way as fx is equal to c into gx where c belongs to r and gx g is a primitive member of rx now g can be uniquely expressed as the product of irreducible elements of rx now we see what what can we say about c small c let c is equal to h1x into h2x into so on h sx where h1 has to so on hs both are in rx so 0 is equal to degree of c since degree of c will be 0 so it will be degree h1x plus degree h2x plus 1 plus degree hs x why because this c can be written as multiplication of h1 h2 and so on hs and degree of c will be degree of this product it means it is degree of this one h1 plus degree h2 plus 1 to plus degree hs so it implies degree each hix must be of degree 0 therefore each hix is an element of r therefore the only factorization of c as an element of r are those it had as an element of r in particular if alpha belongs to r is irreducible then alpha then alpha belongs to r is also irreducible but this r is a unique factorization domain therefore c in r can be uniquely expressed as the product of irreducible elements of r and hence of rx finally conclude that fx is equal to c into gx can be uniquely expressed as the product of irreducible elements of rx and this rx is a unique factorization domain so this completes the proof of our earlier theorem now we have two corollaries also after these two corollaries we have a criteria i sensitive criterion of irreducibility this criterion will be used to solve some of the problems we will see them uh, tomorrow but here since we have some more time so let us go further with our corollary one if r is a unique factorization domain then so is r x1 x2 so on xn see its proof if r is a unique factorization domain then we know that r1 is equal to rx1 is a unique factorization domain now r1 is a unique factorization domain implies that r2 is equal to r1 x2 means r x1 x2 is also a unique factorization domain apply this so continuing this process a finite number of times we conclude that R x one x two so on x n is a unique factorization domain. So this is proof. There is another corollary. 
let us see those, that one. If f is a field, then f x1, x2, so on, xn is a unique factorization domain. See its proof. If f is a field, then we know that f1 is equal to fx1 is a unique factorization domain. Now, f1 is a unique factorization domain implies that f2 is equal to f1, x2 means fx1, x2 is a unique factorization domain. Now, continue this process a finite number of times, then you can, we will conclude that fx1, x2, so on, xn is a unique factorization domain. Next, let us see what is this theorem Eisenstein's criterion of irreducibility, but we will discuss it tomorrow. Let f be the field of quotients of a unique factorization domain R. If fx is written as a0 plus a1x plus a2 square plus one plus a n into x to the power n, it belongs to Rx. Here all a0, a1, a1, so on, a1, a2, so on, a n, they are the uh, real numbers. And p is a prime element of R such that p divides a0, p divides a1, so on, p divides a n minus one, but p is not a divisor of a n. P divides all the coefficients except this a n. And also p square is not a divisor of a0, then f is irreducible in fx. So this theorem gives you a criteria to check whether a given uh, polynomial is irreducible in fx or not. So this is all about for today. If you have any query, you just message me or you can raise your hand. There is also uh, the lecture will be available on YouTube. There is a comment section. You can type your comments there also.